I got a request to teach this cute little rooster. I'm going to make it as easy as I can for you and I'm going to show you step by step how to paint the feathers and the shape and the colors. So let's get started. So all you need for this painting today are your primary colors of red, yellow and blue and you can add sap green and burnt umber and black and white. So the brushes now, you need for this painting are some bristle brushes. It's always nice to have bristle brushes on hand, small, medium, large, you know, whatever you have there, okay, you know, three sizes of, of brushes. And this is the uh, one inch, and this one's a number eight, and I have smaller ones there, and I like to have those on hand. And if you can't find those bristle brushes, the one inch, I have this one here I can send to you, and I'll just charge you shipping, because I don't, I, you know, they're not, if you can find them at your uh, store, then That'll be great, but uh, I have in here some people that can we find. will have uh, flat synthetic chisel and edge have brushes. some uh, nice little skinny round brushes, uh, liner brushes, things like that, and um, my voice. So to get started, all you need to do is get your canvas, and you can. You can prime it with gesso if you want. I don't prime my canvases very often because they're already primed. And this is a 9x12 canvas board. And I got the pattern here for you. So I'll send you the pattern. And we'll just transfer the pattern onto our canvas with carbon paper. You've seen me do this before. So you just tape it on and then trace out the outline and then you got your nice rooster ready to go now the first thing we want to do is start painting and I'm going to start with these little things up there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red my chiseled edge brush and you don't want your chisel edge to be too big, okay? Because you want to be able to fit in with the painting. And I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to that. Because I want to darken it a bit. I don't want the red to be a bright red yet. So, we will. If this brush is too big, you can always change it. Get that in there. Make sure your brush is not too big. There we go. If your brush is too big, you can always use a, a liner brush or a smaller, a smaller flat brush. As long as it's got a nice chiseled edge on it that you can work with. Good. So you might need two coats. I want to get a smaller brush. Probably a small brown brush. I like the chisel edge. I find that work better, but it has to be smaller. All right. All you do is fill in that. Just you fill it in so you can get the shape. Okay. Right. Mainly trying to get the shape right now. That's what we're more concerned with right now is getting shapes. shape. Cute little shape. Now, simple. Good. Now we can go back to our chisel edge brush again. And I think it should be able to fit that in there. So I'm going to use 
Burnt Sienna. For this part here, I'm going to use a dark Burnt Sienna. If you don't have Burnt Sienna, just use a brown that you have. Add a little bit of red and yellow and that will give you Burnt Sienna. Or you could use a medium brown or a dark brown. Just take your brush and put on your Burnt Sienna. This is the underpainting we're doing now, okay? That will give us the shape of the rooster. Give us where everything is going to go. Rather than trying to paint everything um, all over the place, not know where you're going, it will be too hard. So this is the easiest way to start this painting. That's what I like to do. I like to get the shapes first. Make sure I got them correctly. Just because you traced it out don't mean anything. It's painting it in is the most important thing. If you trace it out and you paint over your lines, you can't find your lines, and things don't look right. Then you start all over. Okay, we got some burnt sienna. Now, for, let's see, let's see, let's see. This part here, I'm going to use burnt umber. Burnt umber. Have a look at some of the roosters um, anywhere. And uh, some pictures, and see what their feathers look like, and the colors. You know, because I could interpret my rooster could it be interpreted way different than uh, what your rooster might look like. Okay, that's that, and I'm going to use burnt umber here too. I think just so it will be able to be separated. Okay. not going to come down that far. And then, just got to remember where all the lines are. Like I say, you got to remember where everything went. Burnt. Right there. All right. Okay, I think the rest of it could be probably black. Put black. I know. But why? Well, we got to get it so we know where everything is. Black underpainting, okay? It's okay to use black for underpainting, so or you can add colors to them. Or you can make your own black. See the chiseled edge, you can get around those areas better. Okay. Right. So you see, we can see the shape, see? See, see? Let's see, let's see. I'm going to back over that so I know. Now, let me see where it goes down here. See, we're establishing the shapes right now, all right? That there, I think. All right, guys, a little pair of shorts on. Got a little pair of shorts on. Good. And back here. Yep, all black. Hmm. 
it's quite as humpy as that. I think I might have missed something. But it's just a little cross. Get it all in place so we know what's going on. Just using black right now. Using black and trying to get shapes. Look at that. Starting to come alive. Cute. It looks, um, the shape looks okay, doesn't it? I'm going to put some of that red color that we put on the top here. I'm going to put some of that red color. On the face. Let's see, let's see, let's see, there's an eye here, a little bit here. So let's get around here first. All right. Now I've got to figure out what the eye is. When you get the pattern, you'll be able to see where everything is. I'll make sure that all the lines, proper lines, are in there for you, so it won't be so hard. That's going to be shadowed there. And I'm going to put some more down here. Now, let's see what we can do with the beak. So using my small round brush again, I'm going to add a little bit of white to that red that I had. Brighten up a small bit so we can establish that it's separated from the rest of the face. Just add a bit of white to that reddish color. And just brighten it up so that we can see what we're doing here. done. I'm just going to put some black in there so we can see that he has an eye and we'll wor worry about the rest of it after. Just some black and yeah, not too much water. See what happens when you put too much water in your brush? I keep telling you not to do that and I am doing it myself. I'm a bad girl. All right. There we go. All right. Nice big eye. So for the legs, we'll put in the burnt sienna. As you can see, I put some in there already. So burnt sienna with your small round brush. And fill that in. Burnt sienna. Good. So I have there. everything done. Background underpainting is done. Now we'll start on this here, put the highlights on here to bring out some of the feathers. I'm going to use my chisel edge and see how that works. And I'm going to start with some red. And let's see, let's see. And some burnt sienna. Some yellow. Start putting in some lines.
coming outside that light so I can make it a little more round. Just trying to get something started. A little more yellow. My dirty brush. few little feathers there. Alright. Now I'm going to change to my liner brush or my small round brush. Pick up some yellow. some water if you have a problem try to get to move. Good. Just reload and keep putting on those little lines. Layering is what really brings your painting to life. That's what we're doing, we're layering our paint. We have to do several layers to get it to come the way we want it. coming around. Now all 
waiting for that to dry we'll move on to something else and we'll come back to that so we this will be underpainting and the first layer and we'll do a couple more layers so now we'll try this part here let's layer that with some red and some burnt sienna okay same brush red some burnt sienna mixed in trying to get it so it's not blurry all right so let's go down here Add some water if you have a problem getting it to move. There we go. Good. I'll put a little bit of yellow on top that just a, a dirty brush just to brighten it up a bit so we can see what we're doing work while it's still wet that way it'll change the color a little bit might need to darken up a little bit just put some burnt sand on top of that. I'll wait for that to dry and then we'll add our other layer. So we'll just leave that as it is, that's fine. So this one here we'll do some burnt sand. A bit of yellow. That should do it. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. Red, burnt sand, and a bit of yellow. I don't want it too bright yet. Maybe more on the red side. You almost have to experiment with the colors just to see if you like what's happening. I can tell you to do this and do that, but your strokes are going to be a little different than mine and your colors are going to mix a little different than mine. But as long as you're a little bit close to what you're looking for, look at some pictures. Add a little bit of water if you need it. Burnt sienna and red, that's all I'm doing. Maybe a little bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow. Bring it out a little bit. A little bit. You have to reload a lot. If you can get your chisel edge brush to give you nice lines, you can try that. You can try a fan brush. Try different brushes. But if your small round brush is working, you should be okay. So we got more layering to do yet. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go into ultramarine blue with a little bit of white. Not too much white, more ultramarine blue than white. And 
I'm going to put on some little strokes of blue. I'll brighten it up a little bit so you can see it. See how easy it is? Not too hard, is it? feathers. Good. And for the back, you can add more of these red feathers if you want. Let me see, let me see. Let me see. Make it red and yellow, make an orangey color. Some of those back here. I'm changing it up a little bit because I looked at some more roosters and it looked like they had some feathers back here. It's kind of pink, isn't it? I'd rather have a kind of an orangey color. Just add more yellow. More yellow than red gives you orange. Okay, there. We'll be coming back and fixing up some stuff because these are just layers that we're putting on to get it started. So we got blue white again, blue and white again, get some that underneath here, and I had to add a little bit of water so it wouldn't move to my brush. I dipped into water and then I dipped back into my paint so it wouldn't drip on me. So you can see what I'm doing. Little strokes is all you got to do with this. Not much to it, really. Isn't that cute? Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to add white. I might clean off my brush a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit of white and a tiny bit of blue so I can get some little feathers coming out of here. brush is great for this, isn't it? See, if you look, that's okay. Leave that like that. Burnt umber. Blue. 
ultramarine blue and a little bit of white I think Let's see what that looks like let's see let's see let's see hmm I want to establish a nice little one right here and here let's see let's see <laughs> strokes and get this straightened up a bit better this one there we go let's see I'm gonna come down put some strokes here Makes it look like feathers, see? I might highlight that a little bit. All right, let's go and get some yellow. All right, and tone it down with a little bit of burnt sienna and mostly yellow. Just using a small round brush again. This one's a little shorter, you know, if you got different sizes, that'd be great. If you don't, just use what you have. Just gonna make this a little lighter up here on the side. Straighten it out. Put a little bit of highlight on those. So let's say on the left side. All right. Now, that looks better. So, do you want to keep that shadow there? Good. So now we're going to do some highlights and shadows. I'm going to put some a red, my shadow color. I'm going to put some red and some blue, ultramarine blue. And get a nice dark purple color. I'd use that for. in between here just to separate a little bit. I won't move, just add water. Just putting it on the edge of bit too much water and it gets runny. We don't want that. Just trying to get some separation. I'm going to put a little shadow here. Just a little bit around the edges. It's a little better. I'm gonna do some highlight on that. Good. Put a little shadow in here. 
and move it here. All those little shadows help. Okay, just using a small brush small round brush. We'll try that. We'll try different things that we need. Let's try let's try some white. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of highlight. Bring out some of these feathers. Just highlight a few of the Ones are already there. All right. That brings it out a little better. For the eye, I'm just going to take a toothpick because it's a small, a nice small top on it. Get a little bit more control. I'm going to put a little bit of white in the eye section here. A little tiny dab will do ya. Put a little bit of a highlight of yellow, white, maybe a little bit of red on top of the beak. See how all those little highlight, highlights uh, help? Let's see what else we can do now. Let's stick with this brush for now. I'm not really sure if I need to use different brushes. I'm just trying to see what works best. And that's what you have to do. You have to try your different brushes and just see what gives you the best results. So I'll just stick with this little round brush. If you don't have one of these, a small chiseled edge brush would be good, flat. So next I'm going to Add a few more highlights here. I'm going to use yellow and red. So just yellow. And I think I'm just going to drag through my yellow and my red just so that I can try that. Let's see, let's see. A little more yellow. It's just a lot of short strokes and layering, highlighting. A more yellow. See, it creates some nice feathers. A small brush and highlights. I'm going to switch just for now to my chisel edge brush just to see if I can get some like a bigger feathers. A nice chiseled edge. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens.
Ooh, that's pretty nice. So you can use a small round brush or chisel edge. Whatever works for you. Some nice feathers going on there, don't we? Very nice. A little bit of yellow white, and I'm just going to let get some more down here. Little strokes. You can layer several times if you want. Just try not to lose your underpainting, but if you do, we'll put some back in. See, I find this brush not that easy to work with, but still want to give it a try. Go back to the small brush we have too. Okay, so a little more yellow than red, but uh, Right, that's good. A few little highlights down here. Just to bring out a few feathers. Just using some red and yellow. Red and yellow. Kind of an orangey color. Quick little strokes. Alright, so to highlight those back feathers a little bit, right here we'll use some ultramarine blue and some white. So we have a feather here. some more here just want to separate them a little bit see because you got your underpainting there and it's nice and dark I'm just trying to get these feathers to look nice There we go. Might want to even that out a little bit here. That looks nice. Hmm. It's cute, isn't it? Look around on your painting and see where it needs extra highlight. 
extra shadows. Just changed my little round brush. Just to bring it out a little more. And I think I'm going to put a little more shadows in those feathers just to bring them out more. So I think I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber. As you can tell, I'm kind of experimenting with my colors. We can work together on it. So I just want to show you that you can make decisions on your own also. So I don't tell you when I just go do my own thing, then you're not going to know, right? I'm just going to throw in a few little in between where the highlights are. And that should bring those feathers out a little more. It's contrast. This contrast. Light against dark. All right, so what we'll do is keep adding a few little shadows here, just in between. And that will bring those feathers out more. All right. See how it makes them pop? Let's try a little few in here. A little shallow. A little bit here. See? Makes it stand out. We need a little tiny bit of highlight with a pinkish color, white and red, and I think that might look nice on the edge of here. I'll bring that out a little bit there, see? Maybe a little more on the snout, on the beak. Um, what else? What else? A little tiny bit around the eye. Just bring out that black. How's that? That looks good. That looks better. Don't know if you want anything in the chest there. Maybe a little bit of blue. Let's try it. Let's try a little bit of ultramarine blue and white. Just a little bit, and just a couple of little strokes here. Bring it out a little bit, see? Now, let's see if we can separate that so it looks like. I think we're okay. Yeah, so let's separate this here a little bit. Get some feathers going on there. Just a little bit in here. Maybe bring this down a little more with some just salt green blue. I'm going to leave that and we're going to finish it off with some grass under the feet there and maybe a little I don't know maybe a little something for him to stand on all right so just get a bristle brush and dip into some ultramarine blue and yellow 
cad yellow. If you don't have that, just use sap green. All right, and then we'll put some grass here. And we'll just get some grass on there. Nothing fussy, nothing. Just a simple little grassy area. All right. You can put whatever you want in your painting. It's just an idea for you, that's all. Right, so put some lighter grass on top of the darker grass if you want. Pull up some grass if you want. Right. You need lots of paint on your brush to get this to, to move. go back with some darks and some lights light green dark green have your grass whatever way you want it pull up, 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 up. If you want to a nice little technique See? Pretty simple. You can just go back and get a bit of yellow if you want to highlight some areas. Right. Use sap green and you can put like green on one side and yellow on the other and pull up. Find a white is a little bit too bright. And just pull up a few, a few strands of grass. Alright. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can put whatever you want in there. Just trying to give you some ideas. When you do these grasses, you overlap each other, and that uh, it's nice. It gives a nice feel to it. All right. To the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, straight up. To the right, to the left, straight up. So what we'll do is we'll put grass around the feet. Now you can put them standing on something if you like. Um, I think just his feet buried in the grass is nice. Let's see, you just stroll along in the grass. want to put some highlight on the grass just go back into your yellow maybe a bit of burnt sienna just to, to try different colors to see what it'd be like it's nice look at that, that nice a bit of burnt sienna a bit of burnt sienna and some yellow is nice brightens it up a little bit. Even a little bit of red. You know, let's just experiment with some colors. Just putting on the, the burnt sienna. Look. It's pretty. 
adds a little bit of color to it. Just go up over the grass a little bit and make it look like just some background flowers or something. I don't know. A little more yellow and red. More yellow. Just kind of playing with my colors. We got the um, the rooster is the focal point, and so you don't have to have a lot down here if you don't want to. If you want to add a little color, you can dip into your red, your yellow, just to give it a little bit of an interest. Just a little bit. I'm kind of hard to stop when I when I start doing things. I kind of keep going, and I just end up either making a mess or sometimes I'm lucky and it comes out really nice. And I lost some of my my long grass. I'm gonna go through my yellow, my green. Up some more. So I lost putting on more grass and things. Like I say, I can't. I love playing around with my paintings. Just to, it's good to experiment and see what you can get, and not be afraid. Don't be afraid because you can always take it out. If you make that grass there and you don't like it, just tap over it again with more green. You know, don't worry. If you do something with your rooster and you don't like, say if you did this and you couldn't stand it, go back to the original color and start over again on that one section. No need to take out your whole rooster. Some people tell me that they paint over their paintings and I'm like, you don't even need to paint over all your painting, just the sections that you don't like and redo them. So it might be part, pick out, leave the parts that you do like and Fix the parts, you know, just go back to the original color, to the, the background color, and then redo it. I don't like painting over a full painting. I'm just going to put a little flower here and there. I don't know. Just tapping on a few little dots there just to represent a couple of little flowers or something. So if um, you can add whatever you want to it. Uh, I can use my one inch brush that I use for my flowers. This one here. This won't a nice top on it. Really great for flowers. I have an old one here that I use all the time. But see how they open up. Isn't it nice? You dip into some of your colors. Your whites and your yellows and Tap on a few little flowers here and there. Just a few little ones here and there. Okay. So, you can do whatever you want with your painting. Put more in the background if you want. Rooster's cute. I like him. I hope you like it and I hope you found this helpful and I hope it helps you get a nice little rooster.